Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this week's Photoshop edit walkthrough and this week it is going to be this image here which is an image I did quite a while back and I have also got a speed edit on my YouTube channel of this um, image. Uh, this was taken in my home studio a few years ago with uh, Rennie Robin uh, when she came over to stay for a month or so and travel around England. Uh, we went on some <coughs> adventures to um, historic castles and uh, just cool landscapes to get some back plates and things like that. And while she was over, we got this image of her in the studio. Um, so yeah, let's jump into the video and we can go through the process. So let's just go down. As you can see, this is a straight out camera image. It's playing in raw, bringing some of those shadows out in the cape. <coughs> now, doing a little bit of a clean up on the image, just getting rid of this was the modifier here. And just shooting this against the grey background. So, all I'm doing here is sampling the colour around and just painting over with a brush on a blank layer. If my voice does sound a little bit weird today, it's because I bit my tongue earlier <laughs> and it's really hurting, so I'm trying to talk without <coughs> my tongue hurting and the joys of eating too fast. So here I am, just cleaning up uh, Rene's face and now bringing in some decay textures and adding it on to the face. Now using Free Transform and the Warp tool, just trying to play around with the, the texture and match it to the curves of the face and now with a layer mask just painted away the inside and some of the outside and keeping this area here the tear so it looks like the skin's peeling away and then underneath it reveals the whatever if you want it to be lizard skin or demon skin whatever you want <coughs> Again, with the free transform and warp tool and the layer mask, just paint in and adding away this texture here. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to match the colour of the tear to the colour of Rene's skin using hue saturation, and paint also painting on the, on a blank layer with on the colour blend mode to try and get the skin look like it's peeling off. So here I'm just kind of refining and playing around with with the image seeing what looks best now I'm just painting in this little crack here I did that again just with a brush painting in and now again because we're working non-destructive I'm just, just painting in and around the layer mask just trying to blend it into the face a little bit better now again the curves I'm just darkening <coughs> this area around here, the peel, so it looks matches the contrast of the rest of the image. I'm probably sitting back here and just looking at the image and thinking what to do. So uh, this is a stock image of a rotten apple. I thought I would bring that in and use that for the texture of the skin. So again, just using blend modes like soft light, just to place it on the skin, on the model, and then just using a layer mask to paint around that. So I actually put the apple on overlay blend mode, and with hue saturation, desaturated the colours and changed the hues, and then with a layer mask just painted away the eyes and places like that. As you can see, it kind of really blends quite well into the skin in these areas. And this is how I would actually, is how I do scars on faces as well, just using blend modes. Also, because of the, the final output of this image, I was going to be black and white Victorian style. Colours wasn't as important when I was playing around. So here I am just painting the eye black to get that demon eye effect. Again, just with a brush on a blank layer.
trying to make it look more realistic now by blending around the edges and trying to use blend diff to see if I can make it look any better. Now with a black and white adjustment layer I'm just turning the image to black and white. So I'm stopping here, I must be doing something. So with the curves now I am just darkening the edges of this peeling skin. As you see when you turn it to black and white a lot of the <coughs> mess of the colours around this area here it doesn't really matter too much about them. So now I'm again on a blank layer painting in the blood on the nose. Oh, I started doing that and then decided to actually composite the blood in from another texture. Again this time on a soft light blend mode just bringing it in and placing it onto the face like so. <coughs> Now with the layer mask just painting around, so actually the blood was set on multiply. Changing the hue saturation, changing saturation of the blood now. And then bringing a little bit of more blood back in and putting it around the nostrils just again for realism. As you would probably have a little bit of uh, splatter around here, looks like some blood kind of really shot out of the nose there. So usually when, the, when everything goes quiet like that I'm usually looking at the image and working out what I want to do next. So what I, what I wanted to do was add some kind of burn because this is going to be on fire. I wanted the fingers and the hands to have like a, to be quite, to be charred and look to burn. So here I am again just using blend modes to add textures into the fingers and the hands. Obviously because the fire is going to be rising up from here you're not going to see much of these hands just a little bit through the fire. So now what I do is I also do the other hand as well with the same texture. Now I use the free transform and the warp tool just to warp that to the fingers and the hands. And then just painting it away with a layer mask. Now using blend diff just to blend it in a little bit better, like so. Again, this didn't have to be too precise because I, I knew the fire would be rising up the cross from the hands and burning the hands as well. Now just bringing in the smoke texture on the screen blend mode and overlay. Now bringing in the fire in as well. This season's free stock images of fire. Blend modes, uh, there's so many things you can do with with blend, with blend modes. Obviously as well because this image is black and white we don't have to worry too much about colour. Now adding some smoke in. So now on a layer mask just painting in and out the smoke. And now dodging burning the image with a curves uh, dodge and burn. Stylize the image a little bit, get some more contrast into the image and pull out some details. I 
It's actually before it goes black and white. It would actually work quite well for for lizard skin, something along those lines. I usually dodge and burn more, pretty much every image, but to different levels. And I'm just dodging and burning the outfit. Again, non-destructive dodge and burn. Again, just playing with the smoke and the fire. Because working non-destructive, we can be very organic in how we edit and go backwards and forwards in layers, and we adjust layers, because it's all non-destructive. So what I'm going to do now is that this was from a previous possession image I did. I was just moving over the the textures and the scratches from that image because this is going to be part of a series and sometimes it's easy just to pull it from the previous image instead of going through the library. So I'm using the same texture on the background. And then I will pull, pull in also the scratches as well. So I'm now using a curves adjustment just for the the um, contrast tone of the image and I also cropped the image as well because there was too much space at the top. So I tend to do a lot of things with curves as well. Curves are very powerful and I use the curves a lot in my images. So I'm um, just adding some more blood texture. Mm, decided against the blood texture. <laughs> and now bringing in some texture for the... I'm not sure what I'm doing there. It's been a while since I did this image, but it looks like I'm trying to add some more texture to the face, but then eventually decided against it. So now I'm just bringing in the scratch textures as well to make the, the, the series was going to be a series of possession images all looking like they're from the Victorian era. Obviously I wanted this to look like an old photograph with a harsh vignette there using curves. Yeah, I'm playing with the curves because it's non-destructive we can go in and adjust it. Always work non-destructive, it's always the best way to work. And now what I'm just doing is using Topaz to pull out some detail. So using Topaz Clarity for the detail there, pulling out the, the contrast, the micro contrast. And then selectively painting it in on a mask, you never want to use it globally. So they're pulling some of the detail out of the texture as well on the skin. Now I'm just playing with the textures, the cracked textures on the uh, uh, the top on top of the image, lowering their opacity so it doesn't stand out too much. It needs to look faded, it needs to look old. And then just doing some final details in Lightroom. So sometimes I, I when I bring the finish with the image in Photoshop, I'll bring it back into Lightroom and just do some final sharpening and clarity and maybe a little bit of a vignette. And that is it. So thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment. And thanks a lot. Peace.